My name is Tom Dance. I'm a barrister at One King's Bench Walk, practicing primarily in matrimonial finance. One of the key problems in our area of law when trusts arise in a case is, uh, well, I suppose two main questions. One is the principled or legal question, which is uh, how does the trust operate? Uh, is there actually a valid trust in law? And how will the courts approach it within the matrimonial finance sphere? The second one is a practical one, which is, in essence, what should I do? What steps should I take? How can I involve the trustees? What disclosure can I get from the trustees? And how can I ensure, insofar as possible, to ensure that any order that I get is enforceable as against the trust or against the trustees themselves? Uh, these two broad questions build in uh, a panoply of much smaller questions. Uh, questions like where are the trust assets? That may have huge relevance if the trust assets are offshore as opposed to onshore because it will be almost impossible to enforce any order against offshore trust assets without the cooperation of the trustees. Uh, whereas if the trust assets are in England, uh, England and Wales, then it may well be easier to enforce it against the assets themselves. Uh, a second question is, where are the trustees? Are they in a country which has uh, legislative provisions which prevent orders being made uh, which purport to affect the operation of that trust? Uh, what we would call firewall provisions. Uh, and these sort of questions crop up time and time again, uh, not just in my practice, but, but everyone's practice uh, within my chambers. Uh, and some of these questions are quite difficult to find the answers to, especially the, the practical questions, because whilst there are plenty of uh, uh, textbooks out there which will deal with the operation of a trust and the law behind a trust and indeed the principle as to what is a trust, uh, there aren't any, uh, or it's very, very difficult to find them, which focus on the matrimonial finance sphere and how we run those cases and how, whilst there are clear principles of law underpinning trusts in matrimonial finance, we also have to deal with the emotional implications of that and how it affects people whilst they're divorcing. Often the trust assets, for example, might well be a family home in which the parties have lived, but which, unbeknownst to a husband or wife, is actually held in trust, uh, or uh, capital from which the parties have lived off the income over the course of the marriage, but which are actually held under the terms of a discretionary trust held offshore. All of these problems or questions are, are ones which we as matrimonial finance lawyers have to turn our minds right at the beginning of a case uh, and consider questions such as, what should I say to the trustees? How should I get hold of them? How do I serve them? What disclosure obligations do they have? What is a judge at a first appointment or an FDR or as far off as a final hearing going to say if the trustees have simply written back and said, I'm not going to be engaging in this at all, uh, do your worst. Uh, and all of these questions are, are ones which we uh, in 1KBW uh, who have contributed towards the, the drafting of the book uh, on trusts and matrimonial finance have addressed our minds and sought to answer both on a principled level but also on a practical